What's up my noobs, and this time, I mean it. This is a video for noobs. I don't mean that in a derogative sense, I just mean it as a new player who wants to come to this game and hopefully learn how to play and be good at it eventually. And today, that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do. I want you guys to become a better player and I'm going to help you through the process. So I started a new freaking account over here. If you haven't noticed, I got zero battle score. That means I played zero games. You start off with only 50 medallions. What the heck are you supposed to do? So this is kind of my first video in my series of teaching people how to play the game, how to become a better player. So if you want to become a better player, especially if you're sort of a newer player at this game, these are some you know good videos to watch. Uh, if you've already played the game and you have over a million medallions or over 100,000 medallions, this is probably not the series for you. You probably don't want to watch this, though you may learn some new tips or tricks along the way. So, of course, first thing you gotta do, you gotta press quick play. You can go into battle arenas, which I don't recommend, by the way, for a new player. But this is where you can go to kind of bet your medallions bigger and bigger and better and higher. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is to start off your game is actually to play in just a regular assault mode game. And this is going to be a quick battle assault mode that's going to enter you into a random game. Um, I know it's kind of hard to find. The menus on this game are kind of confusing and sort of stupid, to be completely honest. I wish the Kiwi made them more um, efficient, but they didn't. So, uh, um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you guys some really quick, interesting strategies to hopefully help you learn how to win games early on. I want to make them easy. Of course, you could play them better. If you're a really good player, you can play them better than this, but I want to teach you guys how to do them easy. So, first of all, you want to have some sort of camel lead popping power, so you need a sniper. You want some sort of grouped popping power, so you're going to need a cannon. And then you want some other extra popping power, so you're going to need a ninja. Or These three are really any... You can go like any which way you want with these guys. I prefer the ninja, just because he's sort of the easiest guy to go for. And your bonus is actually the most important tower. Your bonus can be upgraded all the way up to the highest upgrades. So we don't need to see this anymore. Basically just tells you what's going on here and how to play the game a little bit. So I'm going to be showing you guys kind of how to play the game and everything as well. Um, you, know, you know, every single button and how they work and, you know, all that other nonsense. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the cannon down here and I'm going to pop a ninja down here as well. That's kind of like my normal startup, just a cannon ninja set for a little while. Alright, we're good. Don't even do anything else than that. So what's going on? Let's explain all of the uh, the, the craziness of what, what is this uh, screen right here. So we're in a game right now. That means we're playing another player. We're playing Famous Planet 46606. This guy is probably a newer player, uh, if not a completely 100% new player. We don't know. Um, it said that he played zero games before, and yeah, he definitely has played zero games, because that's a terrible tattoo spot. So this guy's completely new. He's just popping things down. He doesn't know what's going on. I know what's going on, so I mean, this game's going to be pretty easy. So each player starts with 150 lives. If you can knock your opponent down to uh, less than 150 lives, you win the game. Or if down to zero lives, you win the game. Um, same thing on, on my side. If I lose all 150 lives, I lose the game. Uh, and that's obviously not a good thing. So we're going to try not to lose 150 lives. Now, um, you might be seeing balloons coming out. These are natural balloons, or I call them natural balloons. They're the balloons that normally come out every single round up here. Uh... They are usually pretty easy. They're usually not going to kill you, except in very rare circumstances, or if you're really bad at the game, they could end up killing you. Later on, until maybe like 20, 25, 30, they're probably not going to kill you all that much. Um, but what I can do as well is send out balloons against my opponent. This is sort of confusing to talk about economy and all that, but I'll get to that in just a second. But basically what, what this does is it costs a little bit of money to send out balloons against my opponent. And normally that's sort of a good thing. And I say sort of because it's, it's very confusing because it gets into, uh, uh, it costs money, but it also gives you more money later on. So it gets really confusing when you sort of dive into that uh, uh, later on. But basically, uh, if you want to, if you think you can kill your opponent, or if you think you can damage your opponent, you probably want to send out some balloons against them. Um, this is kind of your towers. You get to pick which towers you want to send out against them, and also some road spikes over here as well, which are uh, important. Um, once we play in battle arenas, you get free battle energy and free, um, uh, or free road spikes and free battle energy and free balloon energy. So uh, that can definitely make it a little bit easier to play the game uh, nonstop. Uh, you know, when, when you only have 20 energy total that, uh, you know, regenerates over time, um, you can't just spend all of the energy all over the place all the time, and that that's kind of upsetting. So I just realized I might have had uh, a little bit of a uh, problem with my recording, like, just a few seconds ago, so if you've seen any uh, random, like, stoppages, I'm sorry, that, just, that, that was my video rendering on the side over there, and it causes my, my video recorder to be kind of stupid sometimes. Uh, so what I'm going to do over here is I'm actually going to use my random tower, because I know that that is a really freaking good uh, 
uh, gotta use. I'm actually gonna pop him in the corner over here, and we get him up to, believe it or not, a Glaive Lord. Um, now this is kind of funky. This is not the way that you should probably play the game at the very beginning. In fact, you know what? Let's not do that. Let's 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 teach you guys how to play the game a little bit better. I'm gonna pop a sniper in here. I'm gonna put him on strong, and I'm gonna give him to full metal jacket, fast fire, and night vision goggles. Now what this does is it gives me camo detection, and that's really important. For the rest of my popping power, I'm just gonna get some ninjas upgraded to two two or two one, um, and then I'm also gonna get a couple more cannons over here. And this is like a really good defense for like a new player. A couple cannons, a couple ninjas, camo led popping power. Uh, people won't be able to kill you very easily. If somebody does rush you whatsoever, you just want to use a battle energy. If there's something that's going to hurt you a lot of lives, use a battle energy. basically speeds up all of your towers, uh, uh, attack speed, and makes them stronger. So, fantastic way to survive big rushes. Now, usually, what you got to watch out for is big rushes on round 10, 11, 12, and 13. Those are the rush levels that people are going to kill you with. So, for example, we're going to kill this guy right now. All I'm going to do is I'm going to send out uh, two regen rainbows, and that should be enough to take him down. Should be enough to kill him, because he doesn't have very good towers over there. They're going to regrow into bajillion balloons, and they're going to overwhelm him and hurt him more than 150 lives, which is going to give us this first game. So, uh, a really, really nice rush to rush people with is, of course, the regen rainbows. People aren't really expecting it a lot when they're newer players in the game. They don't understand what the good rushes are. So we got our first win, by the way. I do feel a little bit bad kind of beating people with... Uh, that that don't know how to play the game at all. That is sort of upsetting. I, I understand that, but I, I you know I gotta make videos, right? So let's pop back in here to um. Let's eh, let's see. Let's check out our towers really quick. So basically, the way the they they make the game um is that you have to earn battle score by winning games. You get ten battle score per win. Um, to eventually unlock these these uh, towers. So once you get 70 battle score, you need to have enough medallions to officially unlock the Dart Monkey. But then it allows you to unlock the Dart Monkey. Um, once we get 80 battle score, then we can uh, unlock the third tier tactics as well. Same thing, 90. We can get the third tier ninjas and stuff like that. For some of the other towers, just to unlock the tower itself, not the third tier upgrades, you need to have a certain amount of battle score. So. Um, you know, starting at 20 with the wizard and working up all the way up to the very tippity top of the leaderboard over here. The monkey sub costs 100 or is 150 battle score before you can even unlock him. So that's 15 wins before you can even get him. Um, so the biggest problem with a lot of these towers is that you don't realize it uh, early on in the game, but they are limited to uh, two two upgrades, two two tiers on the left and two tiers on the right. But there are third tier upgrades and fourth tier upgrades. Generally speaking. Or your upgrades are really freaking good, and you want to try and unlock those as fast as possible, especially for towers like the Dart Monkey, uh, the Ninja, the Cannon, and the Wizard. Those are like your guys. You can always go get Boomerang Throwers and like some other guys as well, but um, sort of my introduction video that I'm going to go over everything all over the place, but I'm going to go into more depth, into more specific uh, ideas later on. So let's play another game over here and kind of just show you guys what to do. So again, I'm going to do the exact same strategy. Sniper. Ninja, Cannon. Those are the towers that I like to start off my game with. So, let's do that. We're gonna go Ninja, Cannon, Sniper. And the reason why I picked these three towers is because it gives me the ability to have every single tower, uh, or every single... gives me the ability to pop every single balloon. Um, every single balloon type. So what I'm gonna do is I'm again gonna start off with a cannon ninja strategy. So put the cannon sort of next to where um, he's gonna pop balloons, and the same thing with the ninja. Now, if you just think about it, like, um, if you just think about it kind of logically, it makes sense, at least it makes sense to me, logically, that where you wanna put towers is usually in a spot where they can attack multiple times. If you're only attacking once, you're only gonna get, uh, so if you're attacking twice, you're gonna get twice as much pop power than if you attack once, right? That makes sense. So what I'm to try and do is to try and put them in spots where they can attack multiple spots on the screen. So what the blues are gonna do is they're gonna pop over here, go down here, and eventually lead up over here. So if I put two, my tower is kind of in the middle over here, they can attack once there, um, kind of like all the way around, you know, where they're at as well. And then on the other side, they can shoot again for the balloons that are sneaking through over here as well. All right. So what you haven't what you haven't seen yet is I have not rushed with any balloons whatsoever yet uh, to get economy. So I want to talk about economy really quick because that is very very important. There's two ways to get economy in this game, um, and they're both really important to understand. I I I think I would I would I could be I could talk to about economy for 30 minutes straight and still not get every every single bit of information out to you guys. But I'm trying to make this as easy as I possibly can for everybody. 
Alright, when you first start off playing this game, you don't want to go for a high economy. 3, 300, 350, maybe 400 max, that's all you want to freaking do. Don't go any higher than that, you're going to end up hurting yourself in the long run. Um, as you get better, you can start to push yourself up higher and higher with more economy. But basically the way it works is every 6 seconds, 42, boop, we get an extra 250 bucks. So that's our income right there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade a couple of my guys. We're going to get my ninja upgraded to 1. I'm going to get one more ninja upgraded to 1. That should be good enough defense, but I'm also going to get another cannon as well. So there we go. That's a good amount of pop power for now. Um... Uh, the way the income works, though, is you can increase it if you want to by sending out balloons. So it's basically like one for this guy, almost two for this guy, uh, and then 2.4 for the green balloons. So what we're doing is we're increasing our economy, but it costs money to increase our economy. So this is the really confusing part that people just don't freaking understand. But what, what it really means is it takes about two and a half minutes. So if you look at this, this little clock right here, it takes about two and a half minutes to earn your money back. Right? So if you just went zero economy the entire game at two and a half minutes... Uh, we would be at the exact same amount as if somebody who just full-on spent all their money that possibly could right at the very beginning of the game. So, it takes a little bit of time to earn your money back. So it means later on in the game, if you go 5 minutes into a game, 10 minutes into a game, 15 minutes into a game, all that money you spent in the early part of the game is going to start making money for you. So it's an investment to rush, uh, to send out balloons against your opponent over here. So this guy's rushing me hardcore right now with a bunch of greens. I'm actually going to pop another ninja in here. And we're going to think about doing a kind of counter rush against him. So let's do it. Let's do a regen lab really quick. I have not talked about rushing very much yet. Um, I'll probably get into that in uh, the next video. Because we need to talk a lot about rushing, guys. Rushing is difficult. It's difficult to understand and it's difficult to execute. But um, uh, I'm going to just win my game really quick by, by rushing over here. I'm not going to try and defend or anything like that. We're going to go for a few regen blacks really quick. A little force of battle energy. Maybe he won't even use the battle energy. I don't know. But if that... Yeah, I'm kind of hoping he uses battle energy. But if he doesn't, we're going to go for a full-out zebra rush. It's only $2,000 right now. Um, and that is most definitely going to kill him with these current towers right here. Too many freaking zebras for him to take down. Absolutely. We take game number two. So, um... What we really did... <laughs> what do you expect? What we really did there was we defended with our decent amount of towers. Just kind of waited for the right time. And then just went for a really nice rush. And then we won our game, right? That's kind of how we did it. So let's pop in here and do another one of these guys. Uh, let's play another battle over here. And eventually we're going to start earning uh, the ability... Ooh, this guy's actually... This guy Cat Muffin over here. He's 100% win racket right here. So we might be, uh, you know, forced to do some uh, better gameplay, I suppose. You know, the first two games, it was just like, just throw things down. It doesn't really matter. My opponent sucks. It doesn't matter what the heck I do. Where this guy, it might actually matter what we do. Alright, so it's also kind of weird because you don't... It's weird because you see 100 win percentage, but you, do, you have no idea how many games this guy has played. Could be one game, could be two games, could be 60 games. No idea. Uh, honestly, if I had to guess, I would say it's probably one or two games, so he's probably not like an a expert player or anything like that. It just so happened that he won his first game. So I'm just going to pop my cannon over here. I got my ninja over there. And I'm actually going to go for a little bit of economy today. So again, as a newer player, you don't want to go too crazy with your economy. 300, 350, if you want to go crazy, feel free, man, but go only up to 400. That's it. So yeah, we can tell Cat Muffin's a bit of a noob. He accidentally sent out the balloon energy. So yeah, just to touch on the, the energies really quick. Uh, there's battle energy and balloon energy. I know I've talked about the battle energy just a little bit, but if you're ever in trouble... Uh, you know, if you're ever like, oh my god, I'm going to lose this game, I'm going to lose all 150 lives, press the, the monkey button, and the monkey will make all of your monkeys, your current monkeys, do a better, uh, job popping balloons. If you want to do a big rush against your opponent, the best way to do it is by s pressing the balloon energy, and then sending out your big bad rush against him. So that's kind of how those guys work. Um, battle energy lasts for like 10-ish seconds, 7-ish seconds, something like that, pretty reasonable amount of time. Um, and the balloon energy lasts around as long, I would say probably like 7 seconds or something like that. I've never timed them before. You just kind of understand once you play the game how long they last. So, uh, I'm going to go up to 375, and then we're going to stop for a little while. That's a good amount of economy. And what this means is that because I stopped at about a minute and 30 seconds, by the time we get to 4 minutes, we've earned all of our money back and plus some. Alright? So, if we rush before 4 minutes, 
Um, it really didn't matter how much economy we had, but if we ever go to late game yet, man, if we ever go past four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, we've been earning a lot more money than if we did not go economy at all. Farms get a lot more tricky and weird, and it's very difficult to use those guys as a new player, so I don't really recommend farms to a new player. I recommend going just full balloon energy and focusing on, or not balloon income, and focusing on the, uh, the gameplay instead. Focus on the gameplay, you're going to be much happier with yourself. Alright, so we're going to pop another ninja down here, get him up to two, one. And I'm going to pop another cannon over here as well, because we want to make sure that we can pop these yellow balloons. Uh, the balloons, the way they come out, man. Alright, so the way they come out is basically round, uh, two, four, six, eight. They come in kind of tiers. Two, four, six, eight. Then you got ten, eleven, and then that's where it gets really kind of tricky. It's like right around ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. This is where things start to get a little bit tricky, because it's every single round for a little while. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then... 15, 18, 20, 22. So there's very specific rounds where certain rushes are are starting to be allowed. And you got to be very very careful because this is where you got to tread the water lightly, my friend. This is danger zone. This is where a lot of new players are going to die every single freaking game because these things are definitely tough. They really are. So what we're going to do here, guys, is we're going to set it a mini rush of, uh, I think, regen blacks on round 12. So we're going to go like this. Regen blacks. Uh, $2,000 worth. Hopefully make him use his battle energy, if not kill him. And then we're going to go for an even bigger rush of regen zebras or regen rainbows on round 13. Here we go. Bigger rush of regen rainbows on round 13. That's three regen rainbows, and that should be more than enough to kill our opponent over here. So if you haven't noticed, if I'm, if I'm worried about winning, usually what I do is I rush with the regen rainbows. Regen rainbows are a fantastic, fantastic rush balloon. Send out two or three sets of those things, and you're going to be owning people non freaking stop. So we got rid of that, guys, 100%, and we keep 100% today, my friends. Whoop, whoop. All right. So let's do one last game and just kind of talk about anything else that we might have missed already. Now, for future videos, if you guys have any certain things that you want me to talk about, that's that's fine. We'll talk about them in the future. Just leave a comment down below so I know what you guys want me to talk about. Today was sort of an introduction video into uh, into Bloom City Battles, trying to teach people how to kind of get used to the game. You know, you gotta get used to the game. Um, I think in the next video, I'm probably gonna talk uh, uh, mostly about what towers you should unlock. Because I think that's really, really important. For new players, they're like, dude, I just finally started earning medallions, and now I don't know what the heck to buy. What's What are good towers for me to buy to make me become a better player? Uh, and, you know, it's a little bit tricky. It honestly is, because there's a lot of different ways to go, but I'm going to give you guys a straight-up answer for this. It's going to be really simple, and it's going to make you guys a lot better at the game, and it's going to take a lot less time to become better at the game. I actually have another account that I just started playing with. I might switch to that account for my next video, uh, where, okay, if you're ever having trouble finding a game, usually what you want to do is say, no, you want to retry and just jump back in here. Uh, it might be having trouble, though, because mostly uh, the fact that we are 100% win ratio, and that, that can be difficult to find people. So let's go with same exact thing. We're going to go Ninja, Cannon, and Sniper. And for our bonus, we get the Banana Farm! So I don't think I want to use the Banana Farm today. It's going to get way too tricky for us. But uh, Banana Farms are really good once you become a better player. So let's do a Cannon Ninja Start. I'm going to pop the Cannon kind of in the middle over here. Um, right there. I'm going to pop my Ninja down as well. And I am going to be going for a little bit of blue income. You know, the first two games, I did not go any blue income at all. And the reason why was because it's kind of difficult to understand how it works. And I didn't want to start doing it without you guys understanding what I was actually doing. So now that I explained what I'm doing, how I'm, I'm, I'm actually investing money to be better in the, you know, the end part of the game, um, uh, I feel like I'm allowed to do it. Now, another thing about investing this money is that you can damage your opponent as well with these balloons, or cause them to spend more money trying to defend your balloons. So it's just, it's kind of like a double win for you to send out these balloons against your opponent. So I'm also going to get a higher level ninja over here and keep on sending these balloons out. But it's kind of like a double whammy for your, for your opponent, because you're earning money while also doing damage to them. I mean, that's, that's really good, right? Yeah, so that's why I like to do bloods, especially as a newer player. Uh, the best thing you can do is not go banana bombs, but mess with your opponent by going bloods. Um, if you haven't noticed, though, there is two different balloons that you can send out. For the most part, I like to send out the top layer of balloons, but the bottom layer of balloons are better to hurt your opponent. These are guys to kind of get it, get income. They come out faster. Uh, the bottom layers are 
usually harder for your opponent to kill. Like, pink balloons, they're really freaking fast. Boy, are they. They are really fast. Um, there's not that many of them, but they're really fast, and sometimes you can push them through your opponent's defense. Uh, you know, moving up to blacks, a black balloon will pop into two pinks. So now we're, at, we're basically doubling the amount of balloons already with these, with these black balloons. So, um, you know, with his engineer army over there, he's obviously doing a really freaking good job. Obviously. But, uh... But uh, you can tell once I send out the greens, this big grouped uh, balloon income rush sends out faster and uh, can also overwhelm my opponent. But it's it's sort of difficult to do if you don't know what you're doing. So what I recommend is not planning. Uh, you know, as a new player, don't plan on killing people with the greens and the yellows and the, the pinks. As an advanced player, you can do that. But as a newer player, you don't want to do that at all. In fact, what you want to do is you want to save up your money for a really awesome defense or a really awesome rush. So what I'm gonna do over here, guys, I'm gonna get one more ninja. Uh, and I'm also gonna pop another 0, zero cannon in here. And we're gonna see, because this guy, he seems like he's a pretty solid player. He understands what's going on. In fact, he might understand what's going on so well that it might be a little bit uh, hard for us to actually kill him. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I actually wanna send out a lead balloon against him, because he's got no lead poppy power. This is, again, uh, you know, talking about rushes, I, I will talk about rushes in the future as well. I'm going to make a, a, a video talking about rushes for like 20 minutes. Just solid. Every single thing you could possibly want to know about rushes. So he has zero lead. Oh, he's finally going to pop up some cleansing foam over here to deal with these uh, these leads. But it's still not that effective at all. And what we're going to do is we're going to send out um, a pretty big rush against this guy on round 12. So we're just going to go for an all-out camo black rush right here. And we're going to balloon energy it as well. I was talking about the balloon energy. But basically what the balloon energy does is make all the balloons that are coming out against your opponent go just a little bit faster. Now he's got very little camo protection. It's kind of hard to understand what that is and everything. But we obviously overwhelmed him pretty easily with that camo rush right there. And we took down another player's 100 win percentage. Bam, baby! I do feel a little bit bad about that. But, um, I mean, these guys got engineers and stuff like that. So they're, they're like reasonable players at the game. They've got a lot of medallions invested in everything. Um, so now they want us to buy this club starter pack. Should you buy it? You know, to be honest, I don't think so. Um, until you understand how 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 much you like the game. Uh, you know, personally, I love the freaking game. Obviously, I'm making these videos for you guys so I can teach people how to play. But until you learn how to play the game, you probably don't want to invest. You know, uh, whatever, whatever money it is, five dollars or whatever, into the game. Wait until you understand how good you how good you are or how much you like the game. Wait at least until 10, 15, 20 game, and then you're like, okay, now I can finally do it. This is, game is not pay to win. A lot of people think it is pay to win. It is not pay to win. It's um, pay to be a little bit better, a little bit faster. But if you just take your time and just play the game for a couple weeks, maybe a couple months, you can easily get to top tier. You know, like I said, on my one account, after 50 games, 50 games, that's it. I already had every single tower unlocked, and I already had 11,000 medallions. Not joking. It was that 50 games. What did that take me? Five hours of gameplay, ten hours of gameplay, that doesn't take much at all. Alright, so, uh, you know, I think for my next video, I'm probably going to work up to my next account, which is, like I said, 11,000 medallions, I have everything unlocked. I might have, like, you know what, I might not have the Cobras unlocked. I don't think I bought them yet, because they're 5,000 medallions, so you got to be, like, a really high-level player to do that. Um, but again, if you guys have any questions or concerns or things you want me to talk about, I will for sure do that in my, uh, these upcoming videos. For now, I just kind of wanted to go over everything that you could possibly want to know about this. It's not for most of my subscribers, it's just for those people that want to learn the game and start off playing this one. And a lot of people have been asking me for these tutorial videos. You might be thinking, like, oh, who asked for these tutorials? A lot of people surprisingly do. So, uh, the couple things that I really want to get in-depth with is what towers you should buy. Uh, which ones you should buy first and how you should go about doing that. I also want to talk about how you should spend your medallions and if you should be hopping in these um, uh, battle arenas a little bit. That's another video topic that I want to you know, kind of go over because it's really easy to just say, oh, look at that, I got 72 medallions. Let's pop in the White Wasteland. Should you be doing that? Uh, probably not, to be honest. Um, and then uh, I kind of want to talk about rushes and a little bit about uh, how to get the best defenses going because that's really important as well. Some of the best towers and how to use them effectively. So if you guys enjoyed this video, obviously I really appreciate those like buttons. Uh, you know, when you press that, it makes me feel happy. So if you want to do that for me, that's fantastic. Um, if not, if you don't like the video, I understand. You know, feel free to dislike it. I totally understand. But uh, at least explain why. You know, tell me why you're not interested in this stuff so I can maybe make some better content for you guys in the future. Thank you so much for watching and have a super duper delicious day.